Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to demonstrate how to paint a patriotic gnome on an 11 by 14 inch canvas with acrylics. And I'm gonna go get started right away. I had already painted my canvas with the color Payne's Gray. So this was a just a blank white canvas that I applied one layer of Payne's Gray paint to. Um, you can use the Payne's Gray. You can also just use like a Mars Black if you don't have Payne's Gray. But I like to use the Payne's Gray because it's kind of a, a lighter, kind of a bluish tint of black. Um, kind of gives it like a chalkboard effect. So, but anyway, we are going to start by drawing the gnomes. My canvas is dried after I applied that first layer of Payne's Gray. And I just use like a big flat brush to paint on the color of the, the black color, by the way. So I'm gonna start by drawing the gnome. So we have the the drawing. I have a traceable for this, by the way. Um, but when I do the drawings of these gnomes, I always like to start in the center with his nose. So his nose, which is an oval shape, is right in the very center of the canvas. You can locate the center of the canvas and draw kind of a small to medium oval shape for his nose. And I'm using a white chalk pencil, by the way. You can use a regular piece of chalk for this, but I like these chalk pencils because I can get the thinner lines in there and draw more details. And then I'm going to do his hat. So if I take my ruler and measure this, it's about five inches wide. So I can take my ruler, position it kind of center, and do the hat. So I did like this sort of like curved line over the nose and that's about five inches wide. You can make it wider or not as wide to your liking. And then I'm going to extend both of these sides upwards and kind of curve it and extend that curve above. So I have the bottom piece of his hat where those stars are going to be. And then I'm going to start drawing his beard. So his beard is just under the hat. The width is the same width of the hat, maybe a little bit less than the width of the hat. And then I'm just going to do like a wavy line on both sides and have it go to a point. So the beard goes not to the bottom of the canvas, but pretty far down there. And then I'm going to draw his hat in. So this guy's hat is going to a point. I did two kind of wavy lines that go diagonal and meet in the middle at the top of the canvas. And then I'm gonna do his arms. So the arms on both sides start just under both sides of the hat. And I did two curved lines that overlap the beard. I'm gonna give this arm some shape by drawing another line below it. That line connects to the first line that I did. So there's his sleeves and then a little tiny oval shape for his cuffs, the end of his sleeves. And then I'm gonna do his little mitten hand. So I just did a thumb and like an oval thing. And the little hand on the left, we don't really see the full shape. Then I'm going to draw the rest of his robe. So over here on the left, a curved, almost straight, but it's a curved line on both sides. That's going to go down to pretty far down. It's going to go below the beard. And then the bottom of the robe is a wavy line. I made two bumps for the shoes. Those, that's the robe that's kind of draping over the shoes. And then I'm going to do two oval shapes for his actual shoes. Then I'll go ahead and draw the flag. So he has a flag in his hand. So the pole is going diagonal. It goes to the um, diagonal to the upper right. The top circle part is kind of like at the top part of the bottom part of his hat. And then I did two wavy lines, for one for the top of the flag, one for the bottom, vertical line on the right, and the upper left part of the flag is going to be where the dark blue portion is. And I'm not gonna draw the stripes in, I'll paint those in individually. 
and we have our gnome drawing finished and we can go on and start painting him in. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint his nose and I have unbleached titanium and light pink on my palette. I'm going to mix both of those colors together. So mixing those two together, I'm using a number four round brush and this is what the color I'm gonna to use to paint his nose in. So basically that oval is just a solid coat of that color painting in kind of curved strokes. We can go back over this with a second layer and some highlighting later, but for now we're gonna leave this that solid color. I'm gonna rinse and I'm going to load my palette with cobalt blue and phthalo blue. Actually, we won't be using the phthalo blue just yet. We'll just be using the cobalt blue and we'll be using titanium white as well. So we're gonna start um, by doing the hat next. So using the number four round brush, grab my titanium white. So the reason why I'm adding white into this is to give my blue some color variation. So like if I just painted this bottom part of the hat solid blue, um, it wouldn't be as interesting. And um, I'm using that white to kind of give it some highlight, but also to let that blue kind of vary a bit. So I'm painting in kind of short strokes that are going in a curvy sort of direction for the bottom of the hat. Um, when I grab my white, I'm not really rinsing or um, wiping my brush off. I'm just kind of letting that white gently blend with the blue. I'm going to put some more white on the left and right side of his hat on purpose because there's gonna be a lot of, um, there's gonna be fireworks in the background. So it's kind of shining on the left and the right of the of different elements of the gnome. So right now I'm just filling that piece in. It goes over the nose. So try not to paint anything over lapping the nose that you painted in. But if you do, you can always go back and paint your nose over again. And then on the left and right part of his hat, I'm going to just grab some white and just kind of drag that white in on the left and the right and just kind of blend it. So my blue's a little bit darker in the middle and a little bit brighter on the left and the right. Next, I'm going to rinse and load my palette with the Pyrrol Red. And I'm going to be using another brush for this. I'll be using a 12 flat brush. It's a little bit bigger brush that's going to cover more area for his hat. So this is that 12 bright brush or 12 flat brush, just a little um, like a quarter inch wide flat brush. And I'm basically going to paint his hat this solid color. So this Pyrrol Red tends to be pretty opaque and has nice coverage over dark backgrounds. That's why I grabbed it. Um, red can be tricky though. If you're red, uh, whether or not you're using Pyrrol Red or a different red isn't showing up against a dark background. You might want to paint this hat a layer of white first, let the white dry, and then go back over with your red. That'll ensure that you have a really nice bright red color. But basically, I just use the tip of the brush to outline the shape of the hat. And then in the middle part, when I'm painting it in, I'm using the full width of my strokes to paint in kind of a curved direction. That'll give your hat some shape form to it because you're painting in a curved direction instead of like if I was painting up and down. Um, so you wanna paint kind of in the direction of the shape. And then I'm gonna also do the same thing that I did with the bottom part of the hat. On the left and right part, I'm loading my brush in just a little bit of white and I'm blending white in on the left and the right. This is going to give me some color variation and also give it a little bit of highlight. So it's not all just solid, the same color white or the same color red. I'm gonna do this on the right side as well. A Little bit of white right there on the tip of the brush. I'm gonna actually wipe this off here and grab my white. Gives it a little bit more pop of white by doing that because that red was blending in way too much and we couldn't really see much of a difference with that white. I'm just dragging my brush, blending that in, kind of leaving the middle alone so the middle is a little bit darker. Can go back in with red and go back in the middle, just curved strokes left and right. 
When this dries, we will be adding stripes to it. Next, I will be painting his beard in, and I used a number four round brush for this. So back to that little round brush, I'm rinsing that red off of my flat brush, and I'm going to set it to the side. So grab some fresh titanium white on your palette and the number four round brush. And we're gonna grab our white on our brush, a generous amount of white on the brush. So when we do these beard strokes, we wanna do kind of short, curvy textured style strokes. So in the direction of the hair that the beard is going in. Um, here on the left, I'm doing curved strokes that are curving outwards, away from the nose. In the middle, it kind of meets in the middle and goes a little bit more vertical in the middle and it's opposite on the right. So I'm curving it um, towards the right on the right. We want to take advantage of the fact that we have a dark background and so we can let some of that black show through to give us some of that hair texture that we want to kind of create here. So I'm not trying to cover all this space with white paint. I want to leave um, some, some of this paint's gray showing through and that's going to give me some texture by doing that. So I'm doing these strokes, um, but I'm not trying to get complete coverage. And then, so we want to paint below his hands and our beard kind of goes to a point. Um, it's okay if you're painting over the hands or over the sleeve or over the robe, because when we paint the robe in, we can always go back and then paint more of the beard wherever it needs to overlap. Some of these strokes look almost like dry brush, like there's, uh, paint on my brush, but I'm kind of holding that brush relatively lightly to create some kind of light feathery strokes. It's not like a continuous solid stroke. You can do some of the edging of the beard so it kind of curves and goes outwards. You can see some of the little hairs kind of sticking out on the edge. I'm going back over this top piece and again we still have some of the dark color showing through so we didn't have to go back with black and add dark color because we used the background of that so we're going to go ahead and do our robe next so my robe i used phthalo blue and cobalt blue so the phthalo blue was just added in there to give it a darker blue tone into it, it gives it some color variation and I'm basically just gonna go ahead, I'm still using my number four round brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and double load in the phthalo and the cobalt, so the dark and the medium blue, and I'm just gonna fill his sleeve in. Um, the left part of his sleeve is going to be a little bit lighter because we have our fireworks in the background that are highlighting uh, the edges of our gnome. So the sleeve is gonna be a little bit brighter on the left part of the edge, gets a little bit darker towards the front. So add a little bit more blue towards the front. For his uh, sleeve end piece, I added a little bit of white in there to make that piece lighter so that it would stand out from the rest of the sleeve. Then you're going to paint the right sleeve. So same thing, double loading in the cobalt and the phthalo. Kind of define your shape and then fill it in and with those curved strokes. There's about one finger width of space between both of those edges of his sleeve. So we need to leave room for his hands. A little bit of extra white for the end of his sleeves to paint that little oval shape so that it would stand out. Then 
Then I grabbed a little bit of white and I'm gonna do just a few strokes of that white and blend it in over here on the right. So the very edge of his upper part of his sleeve is brighter. Then we can continue down and paint the rest of the robe. So same color for the rest of it, the cobalt and the phthalo just kind of mixing together. I outlined the shape of our robe first and I just filled it in with the strokes that are kind of going in the direction. So these strokes are kind of going left and right in a curvy direction. These strokes kind of going upwards, going around the beard. So if you need to paint over part of your beard to make it look like that there's blue underneath some of the beard, you can. You can do that and then let that blue dry and then go back and paint more beard texture over that. Grab the pop of white on the far left part. It's a little bit brighter. Just kind of blending that white in. And then over here on the right, same thing. A little bit of brightness on the towards the edge and a little bit darker towards the middle. So I'm just kind of letting that blend together on the canvas. I'm gonna paint some of that blue up into the beard, but then in a later step when this dries, I'm gonna go back over and add the edging of his beard. I'm gonna rinse this off and grab my white. So if your red part of the hat is dry, we can paint the stripes. If you want the stripes, if you want to do a different patriotic design on the hat, you can. You can also just leave it white. You don't have to do the stripes, but this is just the number four round brush, same brush that I've been using, and titanium white. So with these stripes, they are kind of curved and go in the direction of the hat. So if you look at the bottom piece of the hat, how that part is curved, stripes are going curved as well because of the shape of the hat. And I'm basically just doing solid white, not a very thick stripe, it's a relatively thin stripe. If you wanna do thicker stripes, you can. And they are fairly spaced evenly apart. And I'm just going to paint more kind of loose, wavy white stripes going all the way up his hat. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of highlighting on the left and the right. So I'm just taking the tip of my round brush and very loosely outlining the far edge of his hat. And then I'm gonna drag that paint inwards to kind of lighten up the left part of the red section give that part some brighter highlight as well. This is optional if you feel this is a little bit too tricky for you because this is kind of dry brush style. You don't want a lot of paint on your brush to do this effect. It's a little bit of paint and just very lightly drag it over the red. The red is dry so it's not gonna blend with it but it can, um, if you do dry brush, it makes it look like there's still some red showing through and that's kind of the point, just to brighten up that part. And I did the same exact thing on the right side of his hat as well. So loosely outlined it and then went back with the red parts and just kind of loosely dragged some of that white on the edges. I'm gonna go ahead and paint his hands next. So I'm gonna refresh some of the unbleached titanium on my palette and use the light pink. Mix the two colors together to get the color of his hands. 
and I'm still using the number four round brush. So we kind of lost the drawing of his hands, but I can go in and just kind of uh, recreate that. So this one is just like a half circle and a little thumb sticking up. And then the one on the right is going to be overlapping the one on the left. A half circle and a thumb sticking up. So I just did like one or two little strokes to create the thumb. It's not gonna look very defined right now, but when this dries, we are gonna go back with a paint pen and outline that shape so that we can see his the shape of his hands a little bit better. If you need to, you can add a second coat to the nose, or if you accidentally painted some of the beard over his nose or part of the hat, so the nose should be a second coat just if needed. There is like a little gap under the nose where I left that the blank canvas showing through, but I will go back with a paint pen later to outline the nose and redefine that a little bit better. Um, when your the robe, the blue robe is dry, you can go back and kind of touch up the beard. So especially the edges, we want some beard hair pieces to kind of be um, sticking out a little bit, but also it makes it look like the beard is overlapping the rope so that we still see a little bit of blue under the edging of the beard. So I'm just, with the round brush and the white, just kind of dragging some of those strokes kind of downwards at an angle to create kind of the edged texture of his beard. I don't really need to go back and add a second coat of white anywhere on the beard um, because I might lose the texture that I with that was created from the background. But we will also be going back with the paint pen later to create some more of the beard line texture. I'm gonna go ahead and do the shoes. So I used Mars Black for the shoes and it should show up against the Payne's Gray. It, the Mars Black is a much darker black than the Payne's Gray. It doesn't really show up on the camera that well, um, but it is. it will show up. So I'm just basically taking the, the round brush and the Mars Black and just painting both of those oval shapes. Before that black dries, I grabbed some titanium white and I'm gonna just lighten up the top part of the shoes, especially since those fireworks might be causing a reflection on his black shiny shoes. So I'm taking that black, or taking that white and blending it at the top and just kind of, it's turning into like a, a gray color, um, just to give it some highlight, but also it helps us see the shoes better. So just at the very top, that white turns into a gray, blends with the black, and then the bottom part of his shoes are, for the most part, solid black. I'm going to go ahead, rinse, and set my brush aside. Um, I'm going to take an eraser and erase any of these chalk lines. Um, you don't want to do this if your painting is still wet. So if there's any wet parts on this, um, I wouldn't erase now. You can wait to the very end of the painting after it dries. But I'm just going to kind of clean the edging up a little bit. Um, I didn't re erase the flag because I need that drawing part. Uh, next, I took my round brush and I did a little highlight on his nose. So just on the upper left part of his nose, a little comma stroke, kind of thick at the bottom, and it goes to kind of a pointy edge on the right. And then I went ahead and painted stars on his hat. So just four simple little stars all along the base part of his hat. When you're doing detail work like this, it's really helpful to get that the paint right there on the tip of the brush. So when I'm loading it, I'm really loading that paint right on the tip. Sometimes it helps to twist your brush and that kind of gathers the bristles together. So when you're loading it, you just um, you can twist it. 
Um, you don't want to load the paint on all the bristles, just right there on the tip that'll allow you to do little small details such as these stars. We're going to go ahead and paint our little flag in next. I'm going to start with the pole. You might find it easy to start with the actual flag, um, but I'm going to go ahead and use the black, so the Mars black, and a little bit of white. Depends on where your circle part ended up. Um, so I use the black and the white to make kind of a gray and just kind of let the black and white mix. Same with this pole. Um, you definitely need the pole to have contrast with the beard. So use the black. You can make like a dark gray if you want, but if I painted the pole white, it wouldn't really show up. Um, so just do your little diagonal line and go under his hands to make it look like he's holding the pole. And then for the upper left part, the blue square area, I did the phthalo blue, which is the darker blue. So I just kind of outlined that shape and filled it in solid. So the, and the flag is kind of waving, so it can look kind of square-like or rectangle-like depending on how you drew it. And then our stripes, we're going to start with the red. And again, the flag is waving, so our stripes are going in a curvy direction. And so I just took that pyrrole red color, started at the top, and did like a curvy line. And I'm just going to follow the stripes down, and each stripe is going to make kind of a, a curvy uh, line. So try to leave the same amount of space in between the red ones for our white lines. And this one, so I did three at the top. And then I'll squeeze in about two more at the bottom. The, all the stripes don't have to be going in the same curved direction. They can get kind of askewed and Kind of some of them might end up touching each other. It just depends on how you drew the flag. And also keep in mind that the flag is waving, so our stripes, we may not see all the stripes. And so we're going to rinse. And I'm not going to do the white stripes yet. If I did the white stripes now, it would bleed too much into the red and <laughs> turn pink. Um, but I am going to reinforce my pole here. So I did another stroke of paint on the pole. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I just wanted to add just a pop of white in there. Um, that one got a little too light. We, we want enough contrast, but I wanted to kind of lighten it up a little bit. And I did the same thing for the top circle piece. Then I'm going to do the little dots for the stars. So do this if your blue layer is dry. If it's not, you can let that dry and then come back to this step. I pinched the bristles because I'm going to do little tiny dots. I am not going to paint individual stars. I'm just going to do dots. It would be very tedious to paint individual stars. So just dotting and kind of staggering them. So there's the little dots for the stars. I also decided to use the white and make a very slither, very thin line on the left side of his sleeve and the left side of the bottom part of his robe. Just a very, very thin line, brightens that up a bit. Right there on his hat as well. And then I'm going to set my brush aside and grab the flat brush. So I'm going to do the ground. The ground is a very abstract ground. Um, the fireworks would be reflecting on the ground, all sorts of colors. So the colors that I'm going to be using in the fireworks. And I basically just double loaded my flat brush in some white and red. Loaded that paint right there on the tip and very quickly, but very lightly. I'm not pressing hard with the brush. I'm using just the tip of it and just letting that tip of the brush just kind of glide across the canvas, but lift my brush up um, and utilize that blue. So it's just a mix of the phthalo, the cobalt, the red, the white, and just gliding that brush 
gently. Uh, brighter colors kind of on the left and the right, but a little bit more shadowy under his shoes. Very, very loosely and not a lot of detail, but just enough to give us color in the ground area and make it look like the fireworks are going to be reflecting on the ground. And also try not to over blend it so it pops of red and blue, but not over blended. So if our red stripes are dry or almost dry, uh, we can go ahead and paint that in. So get the, the round brush, make sure it's all cleaned and rinsed off. Grab your white. I had to freshen up some white on my palette and do your white stripes. So just kind of the same thing in between all of your red stripes. The top stripe of the flag is red. So just squeezing those white stripes in there. If you can't fit them all in there, that's okay. And then we can touch up our little blue piece real quick. I, this was by accident, but it grabbed some white and it ended up highlighting the upper left part of that. So that worked out. Um, we are going to be using the paint pen next. I've been using these Posca pens a lot lately. I love doing detail work with them. Um, my rule of thumb is when we outline things in our painting, we just don't want to outline everything. It's tempting to outline everything, but I just, I just don't think it looks good when you outline everything. Um, but we want to outline things that might need to stand out a bit better, such as his hands. So I went ahead and outlined his hand, his right mitten hand is overlapping the one in the back. So I outlined that. I also outlined his, the end of his sleeve. So just like the bottom part, but I didn't outline the entire oval shape. I also used the pen to outline his nose, but not the top part. So just the bottom piece very, very carefully. I wanted to make this part a little bit darker under his nose um, and the beer texture. So I recommend you watch what I'm doing first before you go at it. You may not like the effect that this creates. I like how what happened here with this texture. It adds some darker um, texture in there, gives it some more interest. If you like how you painted the beard and you don't want to mess it up, then you don't need to do the paint pen thing with this. Um, but I'm just very lightly holding my pen. Treat your paint pen like a paintbrush. So if you were doing this with a paintbrush, you'd be holding it very lightly to create some very thin lines. So I'm just kind of very um, gently letting the tip of that paint pen just kind of skid across the canvas, not holding it dark at all, not making these lines thick at all. But the you want to just kind of do little black pieces of lines to create the texture in his hair. I did the lines under his nose and then the lines that are kind of curving and going outwards on the side and on the bottom. Um, not too many, you don't want to go crazy with it, but just a few little texture lines in there to create some more beard texture in it. And again, if you don't like how that looks, you don't have to do that. And I did under his hat as well. And the bottom part of his robe above the shoes, a little dark shadowy area up there. I then took my round brush and did little highlights on the top of his shoes. You may not need that depending on how you did the shoes, um, but just did two little white lines at the top. Highlighted the top part of the flag, so the upper right part of that circle piece. A little bit at the top of the blue area, teeny bit at the top without making it look like there's a white stripe at the top. A little bit on the left part. And then we're gonna go ahead and paint our fireworks in. So using the white, we're gonna do the first layer of these fireworks with white and then add our color over it. So I'm using the round brush and the titanium white and I'm doing these starburst style strokes starting from the center and just flicking, dragging the brush outwards, making a curved line outwards. I did the little trail of the fireworks, so just kind of a wavy line that's going vertical down below the firework, kind of angled toward the right around the flag. And I did some longer curved pieces. So 
So I'm just quickly doing like each stroke, um, but loading the, the brush or loading the paint right there on the tip of the brush. And over here on the left, same thing. This one might be a little bit smaller, but curved strokes going in a circular direction. Just taking the brush quickly, doing each stroke, just kind of flicking the wrist outwards almost, and a little trail, very, very thin line, wavy little line going down and going back and creating some longer pieces. And I did one more firework up here on the left. This one did not have a trail. It's just a firework up in the sky. Same technique, curved strokes forming the shape of the fireworks. You start each stroke in the middle and go outwards. Some of those strokes are very light. A lot of that dark background is still showing through. So that's the first layer. And to add color to your firework, you would just kind of wait for this to dry a little bit and then grab your color. So um, you can choose to rinse the brush or you don't have to. So I'm just gonna not rinse the brush. I'm gonna grab my cobalt and thalo and this firework on the right is going to be blue. So I'm basically just gonna go over what I just painted, but I don't wanna try to cover all the white. So some of these have their own unique stroke. Some of these are going over the original stroke. But the point of adding that white is to make it look like it's a bright light. So we still want a lot of that white showing through. I'm just taking my blue and going over that. And you can see a lot of that white is still showing. All right, some more. And then when this dries, we're gonna go back over with another layer of white in the center to make it look brighter. And I'll show you that when we get to that point. Um, this is the only time in the painting I'm using this yellow. So I grabbed primary yellow because my firework on the left is going to be yellow. If you want different colors like purple or magenta, you can, um, that's up to you. But this one, I decided to do yellow. And if you don't wanna use yellow, you can use red or blue. So same thing, just taking that yellow, going back over the firework, but leaving a lot of that white still showing through, starting each stroke from the center, just kind of flicking the brush outwards in kind of a radial di direction. And firework in the upper left is going to be red. So I grabbed my red and did the same thing. Go back over your strokes, but leave a lot of that white still showing through. You can even add a little bit of water to your brush, kind of thin the paint down a little bit. And also the bit of water kind of helps with the flow of that. Next, you want to go ahead and rinse your brush off and grab your white. So you don't have to wait for these to dry entirely, but if you add a layer of white just in the center of each of the fireworks, so all I'm doing is loading the white right there on the tip and painting more of those starburst style strokes, but only doing it right in the center not big strokes at all, but just in the center, that's going to make it look like your firework is glowing and bright. So I did that to the yellow, the blue, I'm gonna do that to the red. And you wanna make sure that you rinse and wipe your brush off after each one so that you don't drag other colors into the other fireworks. And then the last detail that I'm going to do is paint a few stars in the sky. It is a night painting, so we can possibly have a few stars. I am just going to use my round brush and paint little tiny dots and clusters kind of all throughout the sky. So some of the stars might be larger, some might be smaller, some might be closer together, some might be further away, but just a few little white dots kind of all over your sky.
And if you have any eraser marks that you want to erase, do that. Just make sure that the paint part is dry around where you're erasing. And that is it. This is the conclusion of the patriotic gnome acrylic painting. Hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.